Hello, hello, my friends. The Lord keep you. The Lord honor you. The Lord cause you to experience this great salvation that has been preached for many years now. Okay, the hour comes to become partakers of the high calling. Not just hearers, but partakers of the promise in light. Okay? Very wonderful. Jesus, the pattern son, as we know, has passed through the heavens. Jesus had to pass through the heavens to be where he is right now. You see this in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, seeing that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Profession, confession. Okay? For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore, listen to it, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So we have a high priest Okay, it's an example actually. It's, you see, we have to see him, see that pattern, and follow after that pattern. Jesus passed through the heaven. Okay, the original translation, okay, in the Greek, was Jesus pierced through the heaven. He pierced through. He pierced through the heavens. And he set on high today. You see, heaven is his throne. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who is in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. Heaven is not a place for men. It's not a place for mortals. Heaven is not a place for idols. Heaven is the dwelling place of the living God. So piercing through into the heavens will mean a complete letting go of anything that is human. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Hence it says we must be born again. Born again of spirit. All this comes through a rebirth in the mind, a rebirth in consciousness, awakening to new life in the spirit, as the spirit. 
Today, we are called to follow these full steps, to pierce through the heavens. That's why it says, come before the throne of grace with boldness. We're not just, we're not going, going, coming before the throne of grace to just receive, but rather to dwell. Jesus pierced through the heavens and so he remains there forever. In likewise manner, we ought to transcend human life and ascend into heaven. Those who follow this pattern pass over from hell and death into life abundant. Okay, now we see shadows of this throughout the Old Testament. Remember that the Old Testament, the laws, the stories we see, everything we see in the Old Testament, and indeed, everything we, we see in the creation are simply pointers to the mystery of God. Everything testifies about Christ. Everything testifies about the Son of God. And better believe it today Everything speaks about you. You and I individually, from the eye of the Spirit, from the eye of truth, we are that man, Jesus. Jesus dwells within every man. But it is how you recognize, how you realize this great mystery that matters. Jesus, the Son of God, dwells in you. He is the one who is actually you. You are sons of God. Exactly like Jesus. Heaven is awaiting the sons of God to recognize this great truth. I'll just read something briefly. Now, this was Solomon. When Solomon, um, in the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 7, I'll start from 7, we know of the story how Solomon built a great temple Temple of gold, lots of resources were put into that temple. That peoples, it became a tourist center. Peoples from all over the world came to look at that temple. To Solomon, who was very wise, very rich, he followed after a pattern that he had seen in a vision. He followed that blueprint to create at this magnificent temple. And of course, we know at the dedication of the temple, how God, you know, symbolically came down like a glory cloud, the Shakana cloud, and filled the temple. Now today, if you go to the land of Israel, you will not even see a trace of that temple. Okay, it has to be so because if that temple was still there to this very day, you can trust my people will make an idol out of that temple. Okay. It will become a, a, a point of pilgrimage. It will become a point, you know, of pressure, and you see, people will obviously exploit, exploit on it to make money, tourism, and all that kind of stuff. 
All those were simply shadows. Solomon in his noble gesture was actually walking in a shadow because the living God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Those were simply mere shadows. But we can learn from the shadows. Solomon too, at the appointed time, will still learn from the shadows. He built the outer court. He built the, the holy place. He built the holies of holies. He built the, the ark, the cherubim. He built, you know, he did those things out of zeal to please God, but he never actually understood what he was doing. It was not given to him to know the mystery of God. Okay, so but today we can look at that temple, we can look at what happened in that era and understand the mystery of the temple which we are. Okay, we are the temple of God. God dwells in us. Praise God. The Lord who dwells in us is actually our true identity. We call it the Christ within. It's already within every man. Now the, the, the difference is either you are asleep and when you are asleep, you are unconscious of this reality. But when you are awake, you know who you are, the Lord from heaven. And the Lord is in his temple. The Lord inhabits the temple. Don't you know you are the temple of God? Don't you know? And the temple is holy. It's actually holy. Only unto the Lord. Within you is a temple not made with hands. An eternal temple. Not made with hands. It's, it's, it's what, we, what was hidden in the inner courts. The inner courts of the temple. Paved with gold. Divine. Immortal. Incorruptible. It's all within us. Every man. You've got to hear and listen and realize this for yourself. How oh, wonderful. So we move on. I, I'm going to just read a little, some few verses here. Now this is when Solomon had finished um, creating this magnificent temple. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 11 Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house okay, he prosperously affected and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Okay? For my eyes shall be upon, my, my eyes shall be open. Okay, and my ears attentive unto the prayers that are made in this place. Okay, for now 
I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be dear perpetually. And as for thee, if thou walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee, okay, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom and according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I don't want to go further. I just want us to understand some of the the promises of God. Now, what I just read, which you can read yourself, Second Chronicles chapter seven, from the eleventh verse to the eighteenth verse. Okay, right now you can see um, the promises of God. Okay, now, if the people suffer tribulation, farming no rain, okay, the, the, the heavens become, you know, like brass, like iron. You see this in Deuter Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay, so the causes for those who, for transgression, for sin, is that the heaven above your head will be as brass. God says, if, if the heavens are shut and you do not receive rain for refreshing of your soul, if you don't receive rain, if locusts come to devour the fruits of your land, if there is great famine and great tribulation in the midst of the land, you know, because of your sin, because of the sin of the people. If the people can humble themselves, okay, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will what? Forgive their sin. And will heal your land. Praise God. And along with the promises, he says he will establish the throne of David. So, along with the promise of God comes also kingship. Now, all these promises are for you and I individually and collectively we have to know understand the heartbeat of God understand what God is saying in this hour now he, he, you can observe here he says that I will forgive their sin what is this sin From the eyes of the spirit, what is this sin? What is wickedness? Okay, in the you know, from the eyes of the spirit, what is sin? Turning aside from the Lord, turning aside from living unto the Lord living outside of the Lord is what we call sin and transgression that's what we call carnal living living in carnality we need a strong revelation to understand that as long as you walk in truth as long as you walk in the name of the Lord as long as you walk in the spirit 
recognizing the secret of who you are, you pass over from death to life. The Father loves the Son and has given all things over to the Son. All things over to the Son. If any man does not live or know the Son, he lives in tribulation. The wrath of God abides in him. Our prayer today, how does a man pray today? Because we see that all men have sinned anyway. All men have fallen short of the glory of God. That is why we see men in tribulation, sorrow, pain, that litters the atmosphere today is because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. But today, every man is called to draw near and hear, listening, 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 listening. I can't help but emphasize listening. Receive this good news today. Receive this mystery of the kingdom of God, of the Christ within. Your prayer, your new work, dedicatedness will be the kingdom come. Father, the kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. And the kingdom come is the kingdom of the dear son of God, which you are. It's a realization. It's an awakening. Your prayer is that I may know him, the power of the resurrection, to awake from him lifted out of this state of human sleep. Awaken out, lifted out of flesh and blood, carnal sense. That I may know him, that I may experience this mystery of who I am, my true identity. Your prayer, you pray by walking in faith in this new realization. Prayer is not just, it doesn't talk about repetition of words, no. You pray fast by walking in this new found revelation, walking Humbly in the name of the Lord. Conforming yourself to the Son of God who you are. Receiving these words of grace. By faith. Receive. Because your faith in this good news is what will set you free. Son of the living God. The creator of the heavens and earth. It's who I am. One with God. Perfect without blemish. You just have to accept that you have already you've been justified. You've been perfected. Eternally. And with this revelation and with this faith. Walk as the Son of God. Pierce through the heavens. Pierce through the brasses, the brass heavens. By faith. No man, God is not against you. God's desire is that you come on high and become a partaker of life. The promise of abundance, abundance of rain, abundance of good fruit becomes so because you now become the source. 
if by walking in the faith of the Son of God, walking in the name of the Lord, is what sets you free. To walking in the name of the Lord, in Him your sins are forgiven. Because the Father loves the Son. We, the Son is well pleasing in the eyes of the Father. You must know yourself and the Father's love for the Son, which is you, has never changed. No matter what you went through in your human experience, your failures, you know, unfortunate things you might have done, mistakes you made, even the deliberate mistakes. It's all in the past. Look forward to the open arms of the Lord. Hear that voice that says, this is my son in whom I am well placed. Let that Envelope you that consciousness and walk by faith as son of God. This is where your healing, your forgiveness of sin comes. This is where your blessing comes. You are you are as you are taken up to become the source. Okay? The heavens they give light, energy to the earth. This give rain to the earth. A man. A mortal cannot give anything to God. God gives from the abundance of what he has. Infinite and abundance. You are lifted from human sense into the heavens where you become the source. You live in abundance and you give out of your abundance to the inhabitants of the earth. You become a blessing to many nations. Examine yourselves, brethren. Do you know that Christ is the one in you? We have to take this word seriously. Walk in newness of life. Our life is in heaven. Our treasure is in heaven. In heaven is where we dwell. We walk in heavenly places. Solely before the face of the Father. We dwell on high. And this is something that has to be done today by faith. Faith is the key. The moment the children of God stop looking out of, for signs and wonders. They do follow us. I've seen signs and wonders. You know, everywhere I go, I've seen great things happening. Seen great things happening. I've walked into places and I don't want to, but I've things have happened. All. When you walk in the name of the Lord, the signs follow you. You don't have to look for signs. You don't have to wait for something to happen to believe you are the Son of God. The words we've heard over time are there to mold up, to increase your faith. Faith in the revelation, in the knowledge that you are the Son of God who dwells in the house of God. This is the house of God. This is the temple of God, of the living God, eternal. Don't allow the deceitfulness of sin drown you. Don't allow the deceitfulness of sin cause this brass heavens to obscure your view of the love of God. Praise God. 
know the heart of God towards you. He wants every child to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. Saved so that you can retain your throne and live in abundance of blessings. All things in heaven and earth have been given over to me. You can awake into this consciousness where the riches of the Gentiles flow onto you by as a river. You can be lifted on high and reign in abundance of life right now where you are by faith. Your prayer, your piercing through the brass heavens, your piercing through the veil, comes by your bold confession of the faith, not being discouraged by things in the outer, but standing your ground in the name of the Lord. The Lord keep you. Amen.